Okay, brilliant, we're recording. So, wow, I'm really, really excited today. Uh, today we're talking uh, all about the power of running a successful business with my very, very good friend, Mac Atrim, who is a world-class business trainer and coach. I think you guys are in for a treat today. And before we begin, I just want to let you know at Empowerment TV, what we're about is really it's about helping people to improve their mindset and really find out who they really are and be themselves more often, which is really the key. So at Empowerment, we have a slogan that says, we protect others, we heal others, and we inspire others to be more, do more, and have more in their lives. That's what we're about here. So uh, Mac Atrim, I'm really, really excited to have you on. Just before you speak, I just want to say a few things about Mac. The reason why I brought Mac on to really share his expertise with you guys is because of this. This guy's resume is pretty, pretty awesome. And I don't want to miss anything. So I just want to read this out to you guys. So Mark Atrim is the founder and CEO of Mindspace, coaching and leading business growth expert, widely regarded as one of the most sought after business coaches and trainers for entrepreneurs. He regularly helps his client get over 20% 20 to 200% in revenue growth. That's just unbelievable. It's phenomenal. You know, this guy has been in the game for a long, long time. And what I love about him is his tenacity and over 30 years of martial art practice has helped him to stay focused and disciplined. And you carry this discipline along with you in all of your business endeavors. This is really absolutely amazing. Uh, Matt is regularly featured as an expert advisor on TV, newspapers, and magazines. He has shared the stage with some of the people that you guys would know, some of the world leaders like Robert Kiyosaki, Tia Becker, Bless Singer, Les Brown, Keith Cunningham, oh, I can't even go on, Eric Thomas, Lady, Mo Lady Michelle Moan, and Duncan Bannatyne. Some of these guys are household names in the UK. By the way, Mac, I absolutely love you. I love your, your honesty, your integrity, your, your tenacity, and the way you come across. I love everything about you, your dedication to your family and what you do. So, Mac, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know I've just utilized about you already, but please tell us a little bit about you because I'm excited for today. Hey, Tosin, uh, what I want to say is, um, first of all, thank you. Thank you for inviting me onto your TV show here. So I I'm really grateful to be able to uh, be and add any kind of value that I can. So thank you. So for the past um, 15 years now, and I've trained and coached over 100,000 people in over 30 countries to grow their business, to grow their wealth, and also to grow personally as a person. Because I think, you know, your business, your life, your wealth can only grow to the extent that you grow. And so that's why it's important to constantly, constantly improve. I'm a family man. I've been married to my wife now for 20 years. Uh, yeah, two awesome. months ago, we celebrated our 20 year anniversary and um so i feel very blessed in that regard you know uh, we have three children uh, my eldest is 19 uh, tiana nicole our girl then 14 year old destiny and 12 year old brandon um i say 14 she's 15 just a couple wow. weeks ago a couple of weeks ago she was 15 <laughs> to catch myself so i love being with my family i love doing things with my family um, when i'm not doing that i oversee my businesses um, we have a multi-million pound real estate uh, property um, portfolio business. We have a, tra I have a training and coaching company and others as well. Um, and so that what I, you know, although I love business and I love investing, my, and, that, and that's a passion, that's a passion. But my purpose is really helping people. My, I came to a, a place where I decided my mission was this. My mission is to inspire, educate, and empower people to live a life of joy, courage, passion, and purpose. And so the more I do that, the more I feel fulfilled. The more I'm helping people to live the life they want to do, the business that they want to have, the wealth that they want to create, the more I feel I'm living on purpose. And I feel, I feel blessed by God for that. Um, and how did I get there? So many years ago, I had a struggling small business. You know, I had a team. Um, that I had to make sure I was uh, uh, feeding, if you like, paying. And my, I, I came to a place where my business was struggling uh, and I was only been married for a few short years and things weren't going right in the business. And um, at the time, Linda, my wife, was pregnant with our second child and I was hardly at home because I was working 80, 90 hours a week um, 
going backwards and forwards, trying to get this bit, small little computer company to work. And, and I remember my doctor said, I have to take it easy because I was nearing burnout. I mean, they took, she, she um, took my um, blood pressure and it was really high. She said, you've got to slow down. And um, at the point, I came to a point, a moment that day that I decided that whatever I was doing wasn't working. I was struggling, things weren't going right. I, I was at a time, in, do, in terms of dollars, I was over $100,000 in debt, personal debt. Wow. Not, not personal debt, money I owed other people. This is not investment debt, this is personal debt I owed, yeah. I owed other people. So my life was a mess, I was a mess. I think for me it was the lowest point in my life. And that's when the journey of personal development for me started. Because yeah. I came to a realization that if this is not working, and I've done everything that I was supposed to do, like our parents uh, and our, our family said, go to school, study hard, get good grades. I did all of that. I even got a master's degree in business administration, MBA. So why was I struggling? And there's a big difference between, as you know, between academic success and entrepreneurial success. They're two Absolutely. different things. And so I came to a realization, whatever I learned at school was theory, if you like. Yeah, there was some bits I could use, but it wasn't practical. So I had to start the journey of what I want my life to be, what I actually wanted to, to have. And what I came to, I came to a place where I realized that everything lies inside of me to make that happen. And so that's a little bit about my background. Very, very powerful. Wow. You know, now it's interesting you mentioned personal development because we're talking about the power of running a successful business. And for me, I really want to understand what that power really is because when, when you were struggling and working 80 to 90 hours a week, you know, trying to get this business off the ground and the doctor measured your blood pressure was so high, you know, you had to slow down and all this stuff was going on. You had a personal debt of a hundred thousand dollars, dude. How did you get out of that? I mean, seriously, you said personal development helped. How did personal development specifically help? Because I really want to talk about the mindset of people owning a business, it and running a successful business. What does that really take? Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of tenacity. It takes a lot of mental toughness. And, and what I come to realize is that there are a lot of people who teach theory. And there's, a lot of, and, and there's not many people who actually show you the practical steps so I, I went on the journey of self-discovery to understand what does it really take to run a business, right? Mm. And um, to run a business, and run a successful business. Anyone can run a business, but can you run a, a successful, profitable business? Correct. So at the time when my, my first business was struggling and I was trying to find a way out, trying to get it, uh, repair it, um, I came across a, a gentleman by the name of T. Harvecker. And T.R. Becker was running a program called the Millionaire Mind Intensive. And I flew from London to Los Angeles to attend this Millionaire Mind Intensive. And some of your listeners here may have actually attended. And this was... I have I've attended. You've I attended know. as well. Yes. For me, that program changed my life around money. And I realized that the, the, the problems I was having financially was related, directly related to the way I... Uh, my habits around money and the way I manage money and the way I thought about money. And mm -hmm. so one of the key distinctions was there were some deep subconscious uh, beliefs I had, which wasn't helping me. And, you know, one of the things T.R. Becker says is um, we, are, we all have a money blueprint. And yes. it's this money blueprint, this is running your life. So yeah, it's your it's money. Like a thermostat, like the temperature in the room, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The thermostat in the room you know, just like a room has a thermostat, which, which, which manages the climate control, same as we have a thermostat here, which actually manages our, our financial situation. So when I discovered all these things, and not only did I discover it, but at the time I, I went on a journey, I, was, I, I, I attended so many workshops, I, I, I read so many books, I mean, so many books and so many programs, and everything started, started to change in less than two years. I was able to, able to fix my business. I later sold that business. I was able to move from a place of debt, $100,000 in debt, to clearing my debt and also becoming financially free. Wow. What did I do? Taking the learnings from T.R. Becker and some of these other um, 
coaches and trainers I had, I started to invest in real estate property heavily um, with no money down, by the way. A lot of it, none of my own money because I learned those strategies and how to do that. And what I also then did is um, when I fixed my business, I sold it because I learned about how to do business properly. And people then asked, started asking me, Matt, can you help me in my business? And so I, I would work with people one-on-one -on -one and I'll, I'll, I help them fix that. Suddenly their sales start shooting up. Suddenly they got more time for themselves and for their family. Because I've been through it, so I know what it feels like and I know exactly what strategies yeah. to use. Uh, and so from one on one, it came to one to five, one to 10. And I was doing these workshops in London, one to 20. And then suddenly, you know, I was now talking to hundreds of people, getting invited around the, the UK to go and speak at different places. And then I came across um, a couple of people who are my good friends now, uh, Richard and Veronica Tan, who then yeah. took me under their wings and I started working with them around the world. Um, and so it's been, it's been a blast, it's been a journey. But that in terms of, yeah, and so, so for me, business is a learnable skill. Mm. Business is a learnable skill. Anyone can learn how to uh, grow their business, improve their business, and there are some key strategic things and principles you must have in place because it doesn't happen by accident for that success to happen. Interesting. Fascinating story, Matt. Fascinating. And I've watched your journey, especially with Success Resources, and you've definitely been flying really high. And I really, you've been an inspiration to me, myself, and many others as well. So well done for that. Now, my, my question is, guys, by the way, oh, there's a few people watching here. Guys, if you're watching, give us some loves and likes. If you like any comments, just retweet it or just make a comment up here. If you have any question regarding your business or something that you want to ask Matt directly, then please post your question here in your comment section. I've got my iPhone here. That, that, that's why I'm looking down. I can really see your comments. So no problem, thanks for joining us, Claire, Michelle, and Valerie. Lovely to have you guys on board. Now, my question is, why is it that most businesses fail in the first year? What is it that makes businesses fail? What, what are they not doing, according to your expertise, based on what your, your past experience is? Okay, good. Okay, so good question. What is it they're not doing? Now, let me give you a story. Or I'll give you more of an analogy. What, what happens is there's different type of people who go into business. But typically, um, I went into business. So typically things happen. But I went into business because after 10 years in the corporate world and working at, uh, in, in, in retail management and all this kind of stuff, I had enough. I said I wanted to take my life, my own destiny. Um, and I started my business. And what... And what I started was a little computer company, right? Was I, was I passionate about IT and computers? Yes. Was I skilled in that area? No. Right. Was I skilled in business? No. But I had a passion for something. And what <laughs> happened... <laughs> I can identify to that. <laughs> right. Was, yeah. was computers and IT a, a, a purpose-driven vehicle for me? No. So there was lots of no's, but a little yes. So what happens is passion gets you going for a period of time, but passion soon dies out. If you're mm. doing something that is not from purpose, from, not, from no mission, and it's, and, it, and, and it's got, and you don't actually, it's not what you're supposed to be doing. Guess what? At some point, it will no longer be, um, if you're going in just for the money, at some point when the challenges hit and the obstacle, obstacles come along, that's when you start feeling stressed out and burnt out. And that's exactly what happened to me. So any new business that I, I start up, or I go into now or I invest in, I'm involved in five different businesses at the moment. I want to make sure, I always make sure it's, it's from a place of purpose. Does it relate? Is it aligned with my purpose of inspiring, educating, empowering people to live a life of joy, courage, passion, and purpose? So that's the first point. It's got to be from a place of purpose. Otherwise, some, at some point, you're going to struggle. The other thing is, it must, you must answer this question and add value. You must answer this question in business. Instead of just going into a business, and the, and the analogy I was going to use is this. There are some people, imagine a baker, and this baker, uh, this person has been going in at 5 a.m., baking with the team, baking in the shop, and knows how to bake, knows how to break, bake bread, knows how to bake cakes, knows how to make those lovely cupcakes with the icing. 
and suddenly has a realization, hey, what I, why don't I set up my own shop? Why don't I all make my own cupcakes? So they go out to do that, right? And they know nothing about business. They know nothing about the three core components of business. That means these three key functions must be in place. Otherwise, you're going to struggle. One is you must be good at sales and marketing. Yeah. You have to master the skills of sales and marketing. That includes the customer service. Now, the other thing is operationally, you may be good because you know where the tins are. You know how to, to treat the oven. You know how to do this. You know how to put the placards up because you apprenticed in that for so long. So operation yeah. is the second thing. The third thing is finance and admin. Finance and admin. Now, you, if you've never done the books, you don't know what, um, for, how to do any kind of forecasting. You don't know what kind of management reports you should be looking at every single month. At some point, you can, be, you can, you can make the most beautiful cakes, but if those, you may be good at one of those functions, but if any of those two other two functions are not being looked at, you will struggle in business, right? And so- That makes a lot of sense to me, actually, Mike, because the operational part is where their passion lies. It's what they love, it's what they enjoy, they know about it, they can do it, their eyes closed, but they're not good at the other two functions in terms of sales and marketing. And that's where I know a lot of coaches, trainers, even including myself, was in there where we are, we're good at what we do, but we can't market ourselves, we can't sell ourselves. And therefore, if you don't have people coming in and sales coming in, business is gonna fail. Absolutely. So that really makes sense why a lot of businesses fail in their first year. And even in the, in the next five years or 10 years, very little make it to that. Very little well. make it. That's right. And, and, and it's good that you've summarized it that way because you don't have to be good at all those areas, but right. you need to understand the importance of those areas because mm. if you're good at the operations, then you're going to say, okay, I need someone to market. I need someone, but you need to understand marketing. You need to understand sales. So you know what they're doing. Finance and admin, you need as a business owner, need to be able to read the reports, understand it cash flow forecast, what does this mean? What does these numbers mean? How, am, how are my KPIs? How, how am I performing, really, right? And so, from the, so the most important area, function of all those, as you know, is sales and marketing. That's the most important area. And as business owners, we should be spending at least 60 to 70% of our time mm -hmm. in that area. Sales and marketing, sales and marketing, 67, 60 to 70% focused on that. Not that you're doing it, but you're focused on it. Someone's doing it, you're doing it, whatever. But if you're not, most people don't, most business owners don't do that unless they will, uh, have been trained in that and that's what they're naturally good at. And then they do that. And then that means you must have someone good at the operational side, have someone good at the finance and admin side. But as you know, when you start your business, you're wearing all those hats. You're wearing all the hats. You're trying to be everything. All things, uh, as we say in Africa, <laughs> jack of all trade, master of none. Master of You're none. trying to be all things to everybody. And it takes a long time for people to realize, you know what? I have to admit, as Bob Proctor will always say, manage your strength, uh, develop your strengths, manage your weaknesses which is yeah. really a, a good advice because if you're Absolutely. good at something, focus on it. If you're not, find people that are good at that, at least have an understanding of it to hire the right people in the right places, right? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Now, this is interesting that you're talking about focusing solely 70% uh, of your time on sales and marketing. Now, why would you say it's important to have a business plan? or begin with the end in mind. I hear this a lot, you know, start with the end in mind, I have a business plan. Some people have a plan, some don't have a plan. What's your idea around a plan? Do you have a business plan and do you follow that rigorously or are you flexible with that plan? Okay, good question. You know, I have studied academically business at a very high level, I have an MBA, so I understand business plans and forecasting and all that. But let's talk about this and why does anyone need a business? You know, to, to run your business, you don't, you don't need a business plan. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to be controversial. You do not need a business plan. Now, when do you need a business plan? My advice is this. It's good to have a business plan when you're about to start your business. In other words, it forces you to get what's in your thoughts on paper. paper. But guess what? the moment you write that business plan and you all start operating your business, you look at it three months at, um, later on, look at a business plan, it will be totally different from what's happening uh, in reality. <laughs> in reality. 
<laughs> but it's been the plan, right? Yeah, yeah. Now here's the other thing you, why you need a business, when, when you need a business plan. You need a business plan when you are going to raise capital. You're going to raise some money. You're going to raise some kind of finance. Why do you need a business plan? Because the person you're asking money from wants to understand what's, what your plan is. So that's when you need a, a business plan. So typically, what I say to people is, instead of having, yes, have a business plan, but have a, more importantly, have a business strategy. Mm, have like a business it. strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the strategy is simple. And th th this, I'm going to give you something that I share with my, my clients. And I keep it this simple. And if you could, because business is simple. We, we complicated it often. Business is designed to make a profit. So you're, you're in business to make a profit. If you're in business for a hobby, you're, if you're in business just purely for a hobby, your business will fail at some point. Yeah. Because it's a hobby. It's not, it's not. So here's, here's how you, you focus on making a profit. Number one. Ask yourself, what is the big problem right now? Mm. So whatever you, you have, I have, I, have a business, I have a business idea for this. Okay, ask yourself, what is the big problem? Whether it's in that industry or in that marketplace or whatever you see. Second thing is, who has this big problem? Mm. Number one, what is the problem? Number two, people. In other words, who are the people who have this problem. Yeah. And number three is the price. The price simply means what is the solution I'm going to give to solve this problem and what price am I going to deliver it at? Is it the right yeah. price? So let me summarize. The right, so you need to understand what is, so you need to have, understand the right problem for the right people at the right yeah. price. price. Mm. This is a st strategic business focus. So if you want to make a profit constantly and you want to be thriving in business constantly, constantly, every day, make sure you're ask, asking these questions. Right. Let me give you an example, Tosin. Yeah. The, some people are in business right now or they were in business. They may not be in yeah, business yeah, yeah. anymore. Correct. Back in January or February 2020 this year, they may have had a business where, okay, they, 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 they think they're solving a problem. Okay, good. And they believe they save serving the right people and they have the right price. And maybe that's why they're staying in profit. But come March, April, May, June of 2020, huh, do those people have the same problems? And am I giving it to them at the right price? Mm. Or do I need to relook at my strategy? And that strategy is... Okay, what is the problem right now? Okay, in January, February, my, my, these people were having these problems. Now they've got these problems. Okay. Or simply, who are the, what is the problem now? And yeah. this is a critical thing. Anybody who wants to get into business right now, if you can answer those three um, strategic questions, then go into business. Love it. Yeah. Love it. You understand, Absolutely. yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Powerful. Oh, yeah. Powerful. Those, those three questions are powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Now, it's a good thing that you actually mentioned that because obviously, of, as of March, COVID-19, coronavirus hit everyone, you know, and those that thought they had a thriving business no longer have a thriving business anymore. True. So there's often the saying, uh, I think it's from Marshall Goldsmith, what got you here won't get you there. So yeah. if you're in business, so how are people supposed to pivot? you know, and what have you done in your business? Because I know you're more busier now than you were before, which is absolutely crazy. And some people are like that with businesses that have kind of like skyrocketed. You know, look at Zoom, for example, that we're using right now. That's Zoom good. sales have kind of gone over the roof since the coronavirus and stuff, because everybody now is getting it and being online and what have you. I know in my business as a speaker, I've had to pivot. I've had to put a lot of my programs online, you know, rather than having them now, because there's been no events since March. You know, so probably the next event is now where we're looking at August, maybe in the UK, if they're opening fully, but that's not fully guaranteed. So what, what would you say to people that have businesses that are struggling in COVID-19 to pivot their business? Thank you. You know, the ironic thing is this, right? Four years ago, um, 2016, I wrote this book, Face yes. It and Fix It, Face right? It, yeah. 
how to avoid disaster and turn around your small business, right? Wow. This, it became a number one also, international. Also. <laughs> it became a number one international bestseller on yeah. Amazon, right? I sold over thirty-six thousand copies in the very first wow. week. Now, in this, yeah, why did copy, I write this book? Your copy. <laughs> why did I write this book? Let me tell you why I wrote this book. I failed. I was failing in business. I was failing in business, and I learned how to do business properly, and I turned my situation around. Then I've helped thousands of people do the same. But what I, I did some research because I, you know, I've, I, I wrote, I've written two books before this one. This, my, this was my third book. But I hadn't written a business book and people kept asking me the same questions. So I wrote this yes. book. But before I wrote it, I did a lot of research into why businesses fail. Why does any business fail? And I discovered there are 43 reasons why wow. any business fails. 43 different reasons why businesses fail. And discovering that, I thought, wow, I need to put this in the book. And so what I did in the book is, okay, these are the reasons why they fail. Study them. If you're going through any of these things, you need to be aware, watch out. And then there's, there's three parts of the book. The second part is, now, how do you turn that around? So I actually give you the solutions on how to turn it around. And the third part, I give examples of companies that were struggling, about to fail, and they turn that, that situation around. Now, so in answer to your question is this, what, I, what did I do? What did I, I, I have different businesses. So let, let's take, and I've advised so many of our clients to do different things. We've had, um, we've had restaurant owners who obviously couldn't, are allowed, couldn't get people into the restaurant anymore. So just working with them on the mindset, they were able to pivot into providing takeaways. Yeah. One, uh, you know, in my, we have three different real estate uh, associated businesses and on our, um, we have a letting agency. Okay. So the letting agency lets out our properties and other landlords properties. And so we, we've been so blessed that we've, um, and it's, we, we've, con we've contacted our um, various tenants, um, not me, you know, Linda runs that operation. Yeah. And so you know, her and her team contacted all the tenants to see what their situation is. And luckily enough, so far, touch wood, most of them were okay. And some of them we've had to help a little bit so that they can stay on their feet. So we are fully occupied. We have a, um, what do you call it? Airbnb service accommodation, service apartments in a Heathrow area. Now, clearly there's nobody flying in into Heathrow to use our service apartments. So what do we do? So, Linda and her team contacts uh, the local hospitals and local government and say, hey, we have rooms available. So wow. those are occupied. So, the, but you think you can sit there and think, oh, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. Or what can, what can I do is a more powerful question than I'm stuck. What can I do about this? Love it. Yeah. So, so right now, the key question is, it, it, the most empowering question is, what can I do? Because yeah. the moment you say, what can I do? Then it allows your mind to find the resources, the answers, rather yeah. than I'm stuck. I can't do this. I can't do that. Okay. Are you guys getting the mindset here? Because this is all about your mindset. To run a successful business, you've got to be able to tune in your mind and have an open mind, really. You know, as they often said, the mind is like a parachute. It only functions when it's open. <laughs> Absolutely. I like that. Yeah. It only functions when it's opened. Absolutely. You know, um, and, and it, it is a mindset shift. Yeah. Let me tell you something else, actually. This is very important for your listeners. Because some people just listen to what I've said and think, oh, it's okay for you, Matt. It's okay. Yeah, you, you. No, I, I've struggled. I've struggled. And so where, the way I attack things and the way my wife and I look at things now is from a place of how can we, what can we do rather yeah. than we stuck with now watch this because I've lost money. I, I, so I, when the COVID-19 hit, I did, I, I've been doing lots of webinars to different people around the world, done lots of webinars with our clients, got my clients together. I did different webinars. One of the webinars I did with them to my private clients was this. I said to them, the way we did business has changed. The, the, we are in a new normal. Now you've got to understand this. And I want you to come from a place of objectivity. What do I mean by objectivity? Now, for some of you, you will, your business 
can exist. You can carry on. You may be not as effective as you were before. Performance won't be as high, but you'll be able to carry on. For some of you, you can't do anything until we come out of lockdown and then you can carry on trading. Absolutely. For some of you, you are going to be out of business within the next few months. Yeah. Right. And I want you not to get emotional. I want you to get objective. Yes. And this is what I did. I gave them, a, a, um, I gave them all, uh, what do you call it? A cash flow forecast yeah. sheet, a for, cash flow forecast template. And I said, look, and I showed them on the screen, I want you to put your numbers in. I don't care if you've done this before last year, do it again. Do, do it again. This was in March and April. Do it again. And I want you to put your numbers in for January, February, March, April, all the way to December. And you'll notice January, February, March, you had some money coming in. All good. What happened in April, May, okay. June? Put those, yes, if they're zero, put zero. But you've still got some expenses. Put those expenses in. Put them in and, and then look at the, the cash flow forecast of, you know, each month. What's the profit? What is the forecast of what I'm going to make? Now, I want you to look at those numbers. Then if the, you have a situation, April, May, June, July, whatever, where there's no money coming in and money's going to dry out, but you know that if they open up in July and August, you can start trading. Then you can say, okay, I just need to go and borrow some money from friends, family, or the bank, or whatever, to tie me over yeah. for these yeah. five months or six months. Yes. And then after that, I know I've got cash flow coming in later on, and I'll be okay. For some of you, before you even come to out, of, out of lockdown, you will not be in a position to trade anymore. Yeah. And so I want you to make a distinction and a, a decision as to, yes, this is where I'm going to be by the end of the year. There is a lot of uncertainty. And be okay to close down your business, shut yeah. it down, and focus your energy on something that is for the present time. What's the problem? Who's got a problem? And what's the price am I going to give it at? Right. So this little exercise becomes a, a, an exercise of objectivity and not of emotion. I, I agree. And, and that could be a tough thing for a lot of business owners that this is their baby. They're hanging on to it. You know, life, we can't hang on to the past. We have to look and live in the present moment. That's why it's called the present. But a lot of people fail to look at that because they're, they're caught up with the emotions of the past or they're worried about the future and they're not living now, you know? So I often say to people, you need to align yourself and calm down and look at it objectively, just like you said. But not only really that, a lot of people have associated, have, have, have married themselves. Their identity is their identity, business. Identity, that's the word, which yeah. Is the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a huge problem. Yeah, because you can't identify with anything because if you do, then you're going you're to struggle. Because at the end of the day, I would say you, you came with nothing, you live with nothing. So let go of that very quick, detach from all of that very, very quickly. But people might say that's easier said than done, but that's exactly what they need to do. Just that's business. You know, that's why I started at the beginning of the call saying business is designed to make a profit. And the moment it's not making a profit, cut your losses, focus your attention on actually who can you serve and what problem do they have and what price are you going to be asking for for that solution? But if, you're, if your identity if you're, is your business, then it's going to be a problem in the long run. Then, and then, here's the then, thing, they're worried about what other people think. All the, oh yeah, that, that's another big issue. Another mindset problem right there. They're worried about what the family was seeing, what people were seeing, people that have seen them being really successful. Now they're not so successful, whatever success means to them. Hmm. And then they get worried about that. I mean, I don't know, why do we do that? Why do people worry so much about what people think? Exactly. I asked the question, I asked them, are they paying your bills? Are they paying your mortgage? Do they feed you? If the answer is no, then I don't want to swear on the camera, but he's like, listen, folks, let it go, you know? Exactly, let it go. Let it go, let it go. But be objective, have... that's the key thing. Exactly, I, I, I'm really loving this. Guys, if you're liking this, let's see some likes. Helena, welcome, Alex, welcome. You know, if you have any questions for Matt, then please throw your questions in. It could be great. <laughs> Objectivity, not, not emotions. I like it. Elizabeth said, fabulous. Thumbs up. Um, for you, Matt, I often heard this saying, which is really powerful for me. When I was working with a property guy, uh, they used to put up a quote uh, by um, Brad Sugars, who is the guy that created Action Coach, which is a business thing. And he used to say, a business is a successful enterprise. It's a profitable enterprise that works and grows without you. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's really powerful. Well, what are your thoughts on that and how do you approach your businesses? Would you agree with this quote? 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, you asked a question um, earlier on in the call in terms of begin with the end in mind. Any business that I'm involved with, I intentionally set it up in, intentionally set it up so that it doesn't rely on me solely to make it exist. And I teach people how to do the same thing because if your business relies on you constantly, what happens if you are not able to operate your business for the next six months, for the next 12 months? If you're in hospital, you're in a coma, will your business continue without you there? So I agree with what he said. And um, in, order to, in order to do that, I mean, I have, a, um, I have a business turnaround formula that I use with our clients. Now, if you must understand that the business is designed to make a profit, like he said, and in the long run, can you set it up in a way so that it's structured in the right way so that it exists with or without you? And the five, there's, a five, there's a five fundamentals of business turnaround that I use. And with my clients, I say, look, start from scratch. Let's start from scratch. Where do we want to be? We want a business that's automated and it's working. And so in order to do that, you must have a strong story. When I say story, I'm talking about what's the purpose of this business? What's the mission of this business? And it has to be irresistible. Why did you create this business? Why is that important? Because you need to understand it. Your team needs to understand it. And what's the vision of this business? Where are we going? What is the story for this business? All right. Number two is now we understand what the story is and why the business exists and what's the purpose of it. What's the strategy? What, okay. What's our strategy for making money? And that strategy must be powerful. And that strategy points back to what I was saying earlier on. The right, the people, the right, with the problems, um, you've got the, and, and yeah, people, problems, price. I, I mentioned right. that. Yeah, yeah. The next thing is once we're clear on who the people are, we need to be able to market and sell to them. And market and sell to them authentically. Yeah. Right? So if you, you know the story, you know the purpose behind this, Pro, um, this product, this service that you have, and you're clear on the strategy, you know what the price is. Now you should be more comfortable to go out there and bang the doors and phone it and do your Zoom calls or go and, go and show them the product or service. But many people get very shy and reserved. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. 70, 60 to 70% of your time should be in your sales and marketing and be authentic, be real. Sorry, is it because those people have not bought into the story? Because what you they said, don't know the story. If they don't know the story. They don't. <laughs> they don't know the story. There right? is no story. <laughs> All they've done is come up with an idea that oh, I make beautiful books. I make beautiful books, and so they want to sell that. But what's the story? What's the purpose? So this is a whole. There's a whole one day thing I could just do on on, oh, on yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah. So why the thing is yeah. yeah. Strategy and then marketing. What's the fourth thing? Story, strategy, st story, marketing. strategy, sales, yeah. and marketing. And the fourth thing is systems. Now oh, all yeah. those things are in place and you're making money through sales and marketing. Now you need to make all that repeatable. Yeah. How are you going to make it repeatable? Well, you need to say, okay, how did I sell? How did I sell 10 of these uh, this week? Okay, I did this, I did this, I did this. Okay, let's put a system in place so that we can repeat that. Okay, systems in terms of customer service systems, sales systems, marketing systems. There's so many different systems that I teach that you must implement in your business because systems will give you freedom. With lack of systems, you'll be working hard, as I did, 80 hours a week, 90 hours a week. I know systems. And for most business owners, small business owners, they are the system. The system is in their head. But if this, when I say systems, I'm talking about creating a way that you can, people know it's, it can be repeated so like you can have them. consistent results all the time. The, four, the fifth thing is structure. If you have a repeatable system, sales are working, money is coming in. Now, what's the structure that's going to maintain it and keep it going? And that structure is a team. You need t a team of uh, what I, not just any team, because you can put anyone put a team together. I'm talking about a champion team. This is what my uh, what I'm, a <laughs> yeah, a team, a players, championship teams. You know, uh, Blair Singer says a champion team, and I agree with it because you don't want people who want to play average, especially if you're heading for world class and you want excellence and you've got average players. It's not going to work. 
So this is one of my five keys to business turnaround. I love it. I love it. You, you, you made it so simple and easy. And it reminds me of a video that I'm watching of Steve Harvey. And he was talking about how easy it is for people to make a million. And he was like, it doesn't matter what you are. You're a cleaner, you're a gardener, you're a cooker, you're a baker. You're, it doesn't matter what you do. It's just whatever you do and you're really good at it, he goes, do it and do it for 10 people. Okay? Do it for 10 people. Say yeah. it to 10 people. Then once you have 10 people, say, well, what did I do for 10 people? He said, do exactly, don't change anything. Do exactly the same thing for 100 people. Right. Don't change anything. Do exactly the same thing for a thousand people. But you know, when you get to a thousand, say you might need a team. Oh, you definitely. That's for the structure. To duplicate that, to put a structure in place, to do exactly what you're just saying. And then he says, again, you don't do anything different. You just do the same thing to a thousand people. Then you do the same thing for 10,000 people. He says, hey, presto, you're there. There you go. And I thought, wow, he kept it really simple and honest. You know, this is, this is key. I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is like coming from the master himself. Now, often they talk about um, people starting a business. Initially, they double. Either they double in business and then they keep changing their minds and keep changing new things. You know, first it's tennis, then it's golf, then it's football. They keep changing their minds. Or their stresses. You know, they get into something and they're just, they're just pressing. They're like, I'm going to do even if it kills me. And they just like keep doing it and tearing their hair off. And then they end up being in hospital and sick and, you know, you made a bit of money, but you can't even enjoy it. You're getting stressing all their life. And people say that there's a better way, which is mastery. So when you find somebody like yourself and mentor that people can be mentored by, which could save you, you know, five, 10 years of headache and heartache. Mm -hmm. uh, what is mastery to you? Thank you. Mastery to me is when you decide to be excellent at something. Mastery to me is you've decided to make a big impact, make a big difference to humanity, and you are fed up of playing small. Mastery to me is you are good at this and it's yeah. working. And yeah. so if you want to be, if you want to, if you want to move to mastery, understand that that means you want to be, you want to be excellent. That takes work and practice. That takes a lot, you know, like I study martial arts and, you know, Master Nichols, uh, my martial arts instructor, uh, one of the best in the world, constantly, it's the same thing. I go into the dojo to practice. It's the same thing over and over and over and over. You know, and yeah. when, I, when I started as a white belt, you know, I, I, my punches, you look at what was probably weak. And if, you know, if you ask me to, to punch a piece of wood, I'll probably say, ow. But now you put so many pieces of wood or a brick in front of me, my hand would go through it like butter. Why? Because I've conditioned myself physically, mentally, emotionally to be able to do that. Same as in business, same as whatever you're striving towards. Mastery means constant practice, full immersion, doing whatever it takes. But before mastery, you must understand, you must have a purpose. What is the purpose of you? Mm. And that will help you decide what is it you need or want to master. And when you master that, you will be more fulfilled, happier, satisfied, a better business, more wealth, more money, because you are good at that thing. And people want to work with people who have mastered something. Wow. wow. I think that sounds like a good place where to end because mastery is beautiful. They always say that you get, you're getting lots of love here. You get rewarded for the things that you practice in private publicly. So you're absolutely right constant practice and working at it that is great definition of mastery really really love it it's been great to have you on mac so mac i know you're very busy and you've got somewhere else to go right now but if people want to get in touch with you how can they get in touch with you to work with you personally um if you yeah i mean the easiest way is there are people who uh, find me on social media so it's mac at tram so find me on you know i'm on instagram get onto the Instagram, like me, follow me, um, Facebook, same thing, Facebook page. Um, some people say, um, some people come to my, my webinars and my seminars and all the rest of it. You know, some people just get my books. You know, I've got four different books. Um, this is the millionaire moment. This one uh, I published this year. And when I, the reason why I call it the millionaire moment, it talks about my story of struggle to becoming a millionaire. How did that happen? And it was a moment of decision that changed everything. So everyone re listening right now, what is your moment? And the moment is the moment, like Anthony Robbins says, 
in your moment of decision, your destiny is shaped. Yeah, and absolutely. so this webinar, this, this TV show that Tosin's put together, it's not purely about just watching and doing nothing. If something is struck in your mind and it's a moment of decision, make a decision so you can have the life you want in the future. So absolutely. find me, interact with me, uh, whichever way I'm here to serve. That's, that's what I want to say. Wow, thank you so much. It's been a real blessing. Thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm really honored by, by your presence. And uh, keep shining your light on the world, brother. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And Tosin, I, I applaud you for reaching out and wanting to serve so many people as you do around the world. Keep, keep reciprocally, keep doing the same thing, shining your light. Take care, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. All right, brother. Take care. All the best. Thank you, guys. And I'll see you next week for another show on Empowerment TV. I've got another special guest coming. You guys are going to love him too. So take care, and I'll see you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.